The Surfing Violinist presents the Masala Vlog, episode 20. We have officially moved in fully. We can now say so thanks to the help of Theo and Annika who helped get Satya's room ready. And in return, I prepared kati rolls. Annika is trying to go vegetarian, so since I forgot to buy paneer from up in the bazaar, I had to settle for something at Publix. Thai is not Indian, of course, but I figured this would be better seasoned than working with plain tofu, so I picked that. Still working off the kati roll preparation of a restaurant in Mumbai as captured by my kind of productions on YouTube. The sacrilege is I still have no grill set up, so I'm not doing real tandoori or tikka prep, just basically sauteing them slash stir frying them in a pan on the stove, so they're still lacking that smoky pop. But how did Fio and Annika like them? Mm -hmm. Right, how's this version? Oh my gosh. I'm loving it. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy. Mm -hmm. How's the sauce? This Pretty is good. amazing. Mm-hmm. That's the best thing. No, Ever. sauce is like... Sauce too ketchup here. Mm -hmm. It's a little too ketchupy. Too ketchupy. But that's okay. It's still delicious. All right. how, how is the uh, vegetarian one? Is it, it is really good. It this is good? Is, this is really good. Actually, that, that base, uh, whatever they had made that with, is actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. I just, I had one out of the... It wasn't too bad. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to be craving this all the time now. Mm -hmm, me too. This is the most delicious thing ever. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. you, should taste, you should taste the real ones in India. See, we have to go to India so I can taste the real ones. Mm. And then you can make the real ones. I don't need to. I'm just All right, well, thank you. Thank you. you. Just come over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For me, this is a success, but it's still only partial. I'm kind of cobbling together a brown chutney out of ketchup, tamarind, corn syrup, liquid smoke, chaat masala, and honey. It's still too ketchupy for me, but the tang is getting closer to what I remember enjoying back in Kalkaji. We were pleasantly surprised by how well the tofu worked. We'll see if it's any good reheated. And of course, there are two crucial elements still missing, the egg on the paratha and the made from scratch paratha. I used two types of parathas, some pre-cooked dawn parathas and deeps lacha parathas. Both of them will do in a pinch. So the next phase in the quest for an authentic Kalkaji street side kati roll will be making a good paratha. Mel, meanwhile, made good use of our new hosting space with our first chai party. Some Indian viewers may be wondering if Rohan is preserving any love of the place of his birth. Well, he's taking after his mom and coming up with cross-cultural puns describing his love of certain Indian cultural exports. What did you say about being a child? It's really nice to have an entire spice nook. There are times when the vibe hits just right and it smells like being back home in Kalkaji. We tried this fusion food gimmick, Brooklyn Deli Get It Del He curry mustard. I put this gimmick in the second ring of Dante's fusion food heretical inferno. This is not Indian just because you throw in turmeric. Dijon mustard doesn't miraculously change its identity to Desi because you put a deli label on it any more than the Seuss family did when we wore Cortas and Saris. As mentioned in the surf vlog, me, Tate, and Ken got rained out of our Santa Rosa skate session, so we decided to stop by and get some tacos from Macho Taco. What do you know? They got Indian tacos. Is this the long-awaited arrival of Dash Max? It's a whole new fusion food that's awesome. Oh man, think of the possibilities. Dash Max. So the dish is called Brisket Burnt Inns Indian Flatbread. It's on the more expensive side of their menu at US $14, but it's bigger than their normal tacos. Definitely on the sweeter side, but I'm just really not sure what type of Indian flatbread they're going for. It's like some strange hybrid of paratha, puri, naan, and the kind of no syrup malpua I like. Better tasting than any Indian flatbread I've made, so no criticism there. But just like with the aforementioned Brooklyn Deli mustard, calling it Indian is odd, because this is like a Ferengi Jurassic Park interpretation of the idea of Indian flatbread, if the only idea you had came from a piece of clip art made by a bot that's been trained by looking at funnel cakes. For me, this is on the cultural appropriation gone wild into the fusion food spectrum. I put this X tier X off to my mouth. This is sacrilege. It doesn't taste bad, but just don't besmirch India with this Frankenstein concoction. Call it brisket burnt ends fried flatbread and we're good. The quest for the long awaited coming of the promised Dashmex transubstantiation messiah continues. Now that I've gotten this cross cultural critical angst by way of Bourdain exercise for my system, is there anything nice I can say about someone's attempt 
at Cross Cultural Artistic Work. Yes, I have two recommendations this month. The Year of Living Dangerously, Peter Weir's film from 1982 with Mel Gibson and Sigourney Weaver. No, it is not about India, having been set in Indonesia, but it does have a very interesting India connection because of Indonesia's reverence for the story of Arjun and Krishna. And yes, as you all know, I'm extremely impetuous in both my criticism and my praise, and prone to serious overreaction and enthusiasm, but this is one of my favorite movies of all time when it comes to cross-cultural communication. Cannot recommend it highly enough. And next, Mel and I watched our first Merchant Ivory production, The Householder. Set and shot in Delhi, this movie is a beyond Bollywood treasure starring Shashi Kapoor. I love this movie, can't say enough good about it, so I will reserve my praise of this film for this month's Beyond Bollywood One Take. Tune into that for the full story. Product review, Aruj Dal Makani. Initially, I thought it was surprisingly good. And then it really hits you with something really strong, and then it leaves you kind of with a tomato aftertaste. It's very aromatic smelling, mm -hmm. like not in a Dal Makani way, though. Yeah. It's like All right. Where'd you get it, Upna? World Market. Oh, World Market, ah. Mm. Hilarious, okay. Yeah, it's a little too aromatic from, from yeah. my personal preference. Yeah. From what we would eat in Delhi, this is a little more on the aromatic side. Tastes like a candle to me. Oh, I mean, it's, I think it's strong on like, probably some clove and some right. cinnamon. Clove. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, it, it, it's almost like potpourri. Mm -hmm. The clove, you're right, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, prefer mine. Oh, that bite, that bite was pretty good. You put some salt on it, it's not so bad. But yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. There's some sweet stuff in there or something. It's like, just not quite, but yeah, it's not, it's not terrible. No, not terrible. For the rest of this year, my goal is to get those parathas right. So until next time, let's get back into the kitchen because life is too short to live without masala. Godspeed, Doston. To see these videos early without ads, join the lineup here on YouTube. You just need a YouTube account, and for $1.99 a month, you click this little join button and sign up to get early and ad free access to four monthly vlogs the surf vlog, the masala vlog, the violin vlog, and the family vlog. Thank you very much.